gonna need you to respond. We're gonna have fun today. How are you doing? Good, good. Well, my name is Dawn. I'm really excited to be here with you all today. Typically, you would see me up doing worship or something else around the church, but I have the honor of bringing the word today, and I'm excited about it. Today's message is titled, All the Feels. All the feels. Now, if you've never heard that term before, this is one of the things that people are saying if they're hip and young and cool. I am not one of those people because when I first heard the term all the feels, I had to go to dictionary.com and see what it meant. I'm not kidding. All the feels basically means this. It means feeling something with all of your emotion, whether it's good or whether it's bad. So maybe when it comes to your emotion, you go to a sad movie and you come out and you go, man, that gave me all the feels. Or you have a really good day, it was like really awesome, you ran into an old friend from high school, man, that gave me all the feels. So all the feels, all this type of emotion. So my husband says that I'm an expert at emotions because I'm the most emotional person he's ever met. Well, but I don't believe that that's the reason I know some things about emotions. It's because I have a three-year-old. Has anyone here raised a toddler? Oh my goodness. Wow, good for you, you're doing it, you did it, great. Raising a toddler has been one of the most interesting things ever. I say this about my daughter, she is amazing, but she is three, so she does have this scope of emotions and feels, all the feels that are a little bit ridiculous. And so I just love her so much, but she shows things and expresses things. I believe toddlers, that they're totally unfiltered in their emotions. If they feel something, they're gonna show it to you. And I have some proof. So if you could just put those pictures up, show me one picture here. Yes, that is, <laughs> that is her. It's one of my greatest fears that that is what I'm gonna see in the middle of the night beside my bed. Mama. Yes, okay, show me the next one here. Wow, isn't it amazing that she took after Pastor Jordan with those emotions? So there she is, she's, she's awesome, but she has this expressions of emotions that can be over the top, but not only in her facial expressions, but the things that she does sometimes. There was one day that she woke up and it was like right in the morning and she comes to me and she goes, mom, it's brownie time. And I go, what, it's brownie time? She goes, yes, it's brownie time. I go, Summer, okay, it's like we haven't even had breakfast yet. It's first things first, it's not brownie time. What do you think happened? Ooh, ah! I mean, these big fat tears coming down my mouth or coming down her face and her mouth. And she's going, how could you do this to me? Why are you so mean? I want it. I want it. I want it. Don't do this to me. This is what she's saying to me, my three-year-old. And I go, Summer, you're ridiculous. Well, then it switches from this ridiculous crying to this maniacal laughter. Like, I kid you not, out of a horror movie. <laughs> And then she starts weeping again, and I'm going, oh my gosh, why did you have to take after Pastor Jordan? This is like crazy. I'm joking, of course, I'm the more emotional one in the family. But I believe that if we could see our, our lives, maybe we have learned to control our emotions and we're not snapping like Summer when it comes to just things going on in our life all the time. Maybe sometimes we are. But if we could look on the inside of you, in your inner man, in your inner woman, when someone says to you, no, you can't have the brownie, what is happening to your emotions on the inside? Or maybe it's not brownie. Maybe it's no, you didn't get that promotion. No, that situation that you were hoping to change didn't. No, that friend, that family member, that thing that you wanted to happen so bad didn't. What is going on on the inside, on your inner man, your inner woman? How's your emotions? Do you have all the feels? What's going on? Because I do believe that we are going to have emotions. To be human is to have emotions. I'm not saying that. There's good things gonna happen, bad things gonna happen. But I believe that we all have in us this inner scale, if you will, this thing inside of us where we wanna try to keep things balanced. Do you have that? Do you wanna feel balanced? Throughout your day, you wanna feel content, you wanna feel all right, you wanna just get through without freaking out and having a meltdown. You want to have your life in balance. And what this scale is gonna to represent today is yours, is mine, our inner lives. And the fact that we want to keep ourselves together, we want to keep ourselves balanced. And the truth is circumstances and things are coming at us all the time that's trying to tip the scale and rock us back and forth and try to take our peace, take our joy, try to take different things that we have within us. And the goal is to maintain some inner peace, right? We want to feel okay. And so today, you know, maybe you were 
you woke up today, I'm gonna give you some examples. So you woke up today, you had a big fresh pot of coffee, you woke up and after you had your coffee, you were feeling some joy. Anyone? There's some people crazy like Pastor Jordan that doesn't even drink coffee. Well, how, how, how is he, I don't know. But so you get your, your big, your, your coffee, you're drinking it and you're feeling good, you're, you, your circumstance is great, there's some joy, but then your spouse starts to say some negative things to you. There's, you know, starting to say some things. So, you know, that deserves a couple blocks. So they're saying some things to you. They're frustrating you. They're, they're going, and so all of a sudden your circumstance is tipping. It's shifting. It's going this way. So then to try to calm yourself down, you go out and you get a donut, okay? You go and you get a donut and you're like, I'm going to feel good. But then once you have the donut, you start to feel fat because I ate a donut. So now I'm fat. I'm over here. Now, these are ridiculous circumstances, but put your life into it. Maybe it's your job that you didn't get. Maybe it's sickness. Maybe it's a diagnosis. Maybe it's something going on with a friend or a loved one or something that you don't understand. And there's this battle within us to try to get our peace, to try to get our joy, our contentment pulled from this way and that way and to be circumstantial. Is there anyone here who can be circumstantial? All right, I'll raise all my limbs for you all. We can be circumstantial. We can go through things and our circumstances tend to push us this way and that way. But the truth is that we are not meant to live circumstantial. We are not meant to be led by our emotions. We're not meant to be led by our circumstances. We are meant to be led by the Spirit, to be led by God. And so today I want to tell you that if you've got all the feels going on, you've got all the things going on, I believe that God is going to sift through some of that today and let us take a look at what has the most weight, the most worth in our life. I understand there's many things going on. If it's not something that we're dealing with in our personal sphere of anxiety or depression or fear, we have a lot going on in life when it comes to our government. Democrats, Republicans, chaos, all of the stuff. We have the coronavirus trying to bring fear and trying to bring worry into our life. There are real things going on. And if we are not people, if we are not Christians that are grounded, that have our weight in the right things, we are going to be thrown back and forth like the Bible said, wave to wave, like tossing about in the sea. But God wants to bring some spiritual maturity in the house today, that we would be weighted, that we would be grounded in the right thing. And so I want to read to you today from Revelation 5.5. 5, and God really put this scripture on my heart. And it's interesting because our school, uh, our Bible school that we have, I wasn't able to make it there this week, but it turns out they were actually studying this scripture. And so it's really awesome that we're going to be talking about it today. I'm excited. And the book of Revelation is a book of prophecy, but there are things that we can learn from it and that we can take and hold on to in our lives. So if you don't have your Bible with you, they're going to have it up on the screen. Let's take a look at Revelation 5, verse 5. I'm sorry, verse 1. And it says this, Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals and to open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside of it. We're going to stop right there. So here we get this picture, John the seer, he's seeing into the spirit and he's seeing God the Father. And God the Father has a scroll in his hand and the scroll represents the will of God, the times, the seasons, the plans, the things that God wants to unleash on this earth, the purposes of what God wants to do in the earth. And it's sealed up with seven seals, seven stamps. That thing is locked up. And so in this scripture, it says here in verse 2, the angel's going, who is worthy to break the seal? Who can see into the plans of God? Who can see what the will of God is and cause it to be unleashed on this earth? Who is able to do it? And in verse 3, no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside of it. I don't know if you've ever felt this way before, but you're like, God, man, I cannot see it. You're one of those people that says, man, I'm no one. I can't see what God is doing. I can't understand what God is doing. I can't sift through. I know that God has a will. I know he has a purpose for my life and for this world, but man, these circumstances are cray cray. I can't see beyond this. I can't understand beyond this. I can't look into it. I, I can't get it. 
And so then it goes on into verse four. This is John writing. He says, I wept and I wept because there was no one found who was worthy to open the scroll or to look inside. Have you ever felt that way before? You're trying to understand the plan of God for your life. You're trying to understand the will of God and see what God wants to do throughout the earth, but you just can't see it. You just can't understand what happens, all the feels. We're caught up in our circumstances. We're caught up into trying to understand what's going on in our family, trying to understand what's going on to work. And our eyes are in the wrong places. And because we can't open it, we get thrown off. And all the fields are going and we can't understand. And so we're led by circumstance. We're led by emotion. And we're weeping. And we're weeping because it feels like, I said feels, it feels like no one can see, no one can open, nobody can figure out what's going on. And so if we're led by our circumstances and what we feel like, we'll stay in that place of I wept and I wept and I wept. But let's take a look at verse five. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, do not weep. Do not weep. Come on, stir it up today. Do not weep. Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed, triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and the seven seals. Come on, amen. He is able. He has triumphed. There is only one who's worthy. So what happens? If we go to verse 7, it says, He went and he took the scroll, boom, from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb and they worshiped him. Wow. My goodness. So Jesus comes. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah that it's talking about. And Jesus comes and he is able. He has triumphed over death, hell, and the grave. So we can't see the will of God all the time. We can't understand, but he can. And he grabs the scroll and everybody falls down in worship because they understand we can't understand it. We can't do it. No one could. No one from the beginning of time has ever been able to change things the way Jesus can, has ever been able to break death the way Jesus can. And so he comes and he is able to take the scroll and see into it and see what the will of God is and make it come to pass. Amen. And I want to remind you today that it is not your job. It is not my job to understand everything. And that makes control freaks freak out. Ah, I want to know what's happening. I want to know, like me. Ah. But it's not your job to understand everything. It's not your job to understand everything going on in this earth. You were never worthy. The Bible says this, if you go on to verse 9, they sang a song, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seal. Because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and tongue. Let's make it simple. Nobody else was able to take the will of God, see the will of God, make it happen, but Jesus was. And so they bowed down in worship and they said, you're worthy. We're not. So we're going to give you praise. And I want to tell you today, stop trying to figure everything out. Stop trying to understand everything in your circumstances. There's just some things that we're not going to know. There's just some things that we're not going to understand. And I don't like it and you don't like it. But the truth is, it's not our job. It's not our job. And so what we need to do is we need to do our job. We need to do our job. And I'm going to tell you what that is. But first, I want to tell you this. In this scripture, when it goes into verse 9 and it says, you are worthy to take the scroll, the word worthy there is the same word that is used to weigh things, to check their worth. So let's look at our, our scale here. We're not going to do any math. Let's look at the scale. We need to figure out what's going to have the most weight, the most worth in our life. Because the thing that leads me is the thing that I put my worth in. Are you putting your worth, are you putting the weight of the scales of your heart and of your life on your emotions, on your circumstance, or are you putting it into the one who's worthy and you're saying, man, I don't get this, but you're worthy. I don't get it, but you're worthy. You see, if we want to be people that's not thrown around, that's not moved all over the place, we need something that grounds us. We need something that holds us firm. The Bible says that Jesus is an anchor to my soul. 
He's an anchor. He keeps me grounded. So that doesn't mean that I'm not going to feel anxiety. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to feel fear. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to be worried and I'm not going to understand. It just means, look, it doesn't shake me the same way that it used to because I have a firm foundation. I have a grounding with the one who is worthy and he has triumphed and he is able and that's what has the weight in my heart. It's got the weight in my heart. And so when I go through circumstances, what happens on the inside of me? If I have a bad day, if I have a bad report, am I thrown off? Oh my God, what's going to happen? Oh my goodness, how am I going to make this work financially? How am I going to overcome this diagnosis? How am I going to raise these crazy kids? How am I going to deal with this stubborn spouse? Is that what happens to you? Or do you say, man, I don't understand what's going on, but God, you're able. I don't get what's going on, but God, you're good. And I put my firm foundation and I put my hope into Jesus Christ. I believe a lot of us are thrown off in our circumstance. I'm talking to myself too. We're thrown off because we have our weight of our heart on the wrong things, on circumstances, on emotions, and we're thrown back and forth. Boop, 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 boop. It's time we get solid today, friends. It's time we get rooted today, friends, because he's worthy and we've got to believe it. We've got to trust it. I believe one of the biggest hindrances and one of the biggest barriers and one of the biggest problems of today's church is selfish Christianity. That is constantly focused on me, my emotions, my desires, my wants. What do I want? What do I feel? Me, 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 me. And it's destroying the strength in the church. Because Christianity was never meant to be this selfish religion. It wasn't. It wasn't meant to be like, God, I come to you for blessings, and if you don't, I'm going to run the other way, and I'll come back when things feel good. That's not what this was meant to be. It was, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away so that you can change me. Not just change the things I want. Change me. Change me because I'm not worthy, but he is. That's the goal. That's the hope, the want. I love this scripture in Psalm 115.1. It says this, not to us, Lord, but to your name be the glory because of your love and unfailing faithfulness. Sorry, I'm adding things. Because of your love and your faithfulness. Because of your love and your faithfulness. Not to my desires, not to my will, not to my hope, not to what I want to happen in my day, not to what I want to see, but to your name be the glory. Not to me, not to what I want to see. It's to your name be the glory. It's to him be the glory. This is real Christianity, friends, that I don't exist to make a big deal out of myself, but I exist to make a big deal out of an amazing God. That's my life now. That's my life now. It says this in Luke 9.23. This is Jesus talking. He says, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. A lot of the reason we can be th so thrown off and so back and forth all the time is that we're still trying to fulfill ourselves, but also take up the cross. But how does he say that we have to do it? I have to deny myself. Deny myself. Because if I don't deny myself, I'm still trying to please myself. And God says, deny yourself to take up the cross and follow me. Why? Because he's worthy and I'm not. Why am I holding so much onto selfish emotions, selfish ambitions when they've gotten me nowhere but pain and worry and strife and anxiety? We try to hold on to them because we think we have control when we hold on to these things, but I don't have control. All I have is worry and anxiety and fear. You've never had it together. He's the worthy one who knows the plan, who knows the will, who can unleash it on this earth, and we have the amazing opportunity to be partnered with him in relationship. We were never meant to get it. We were meant to just give it away and follow the one who is worthy. And it's hard, but it's how we're meant to be. One of the things that I love is that the Bible doesn't just say, do this and give us no help. I can look into the word of God and I can see, man, what is something that can help me through this? Because it's a lot to be able to understand what to do with your anxiety and your worries and your fears and your issues. It's a lot to understand that. And it's very real. But there was somebody in scripture who dealt with all the feels and his name was Jesus. Our perfect example. The Bible says the author and the perfecter of our faith, Jesus. It also says consider him, look at him. 
follow him, see what he has to say about it. And so as I look at scripture, I see Jesus dealt with all the feels. As some of us even dealt with one of those things, we'd probably be totally thrown off. But Jesus dealt with these things. And so what did Jesus deal with? Many, many things. Imagine this. You get baptized. The heavens open. It, God says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. The Holy Spirit descends like a dove. There's this amazing experience. And right after that, the Spirit leads him into the wilderness. And he's tempted. And he's hungry for 40 years. Can you imagine that? Some of us, if that happened to us, we have this amazing experience with God, and then we go off in the wilderness. We go, God, why do you hate me? Why is this happening to me? Why am I dealing with this? But Jesus comes out, and he comes out stronger. He comes out stronger. He's empowered by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is on him. And then he goes through so many different things. He's traveling around all the time with no place to sleep consistently. Can you imagine that? just traveling around. There's no consistent bed for him. He's walking around. He's exhausted. He's dealing with people ridiculing him all the time to his face. The Pharisees just standing up. <laughs> you know, some of us deal with that on Facebook and we're so offended. Somebody gave me a bad comment on my Facebook post. But people are showing up to him and they're accusing him of being from Satan. They're accusing him. The son of God being from Satan. I don't know about you, but that makes me want to <coughs> give me all the feels. Makes me want to do something about it. And they're coming and they're ridiculing him and they're pointing the finger. They're getting mad at him for trying to heal someone on the Sabbath. Are you kidding me? That is enough to just make you mad. So he's got probably all the feels going on. He gets betrayed by someone he loves. His disciples didn't understand what he was preaching some of the times. There's one time that he's preaching and they come to him and they go, um, can you tell us what you meant by that? Can you imagine preaching a whole thing and then they go, huh? He feeds thousands of thousands with fish and loaves in a miraculous, amazing way. And then the disciples shortly after that are arguing because one of the disciples forgot to bring bread. It's like, do you not get it? He's with you. He can make more, I don't know. Right? And so not only that, but then, of course, there's so many more stories in the Bible that you can read and you go, oh, my gosh. But not only that, but the cross. The pain, the shame, the abuse, the betrayal, the pain of that, that we can't even comprehend. And so Jesus is going through all these things, all the feels, and he has to make a decision like we all do. What are we going to do with all of this stuff that's coming at us, that's going on within us? But Jesus has a foundation. He has a solid rock. And so the Bible says this. We get a glimpse into the way that Jesus sees life, sees himself, sees the big picture. And this is before Jesus goes to the cross. And it says this. He's praying. He says in Luke twenty two forty two, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. What is he saying? This is hard. This is hard. I'm going through a lot of stuff. There's a lot of things going on, and he knows what he's about to face. He's about to go to the cross. He's about to be put to death. He did nothing wrong. And he's going, God, would you just, if you're willing, if you're willing, and some of you are in this place today, and you're like, God, man, I'm just going through some stuff, and I'm just, God, would you take this from me? Lord, would you just, God, can you take it out of my life? Could you take it out of my circumstance? Could you take it out of my heart? But Jesus says something amazing. He says, yet, not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. You see, Jesus didn't have a selfish Christianity mentality. It wasn't, I'm going to serve you if it feels good, if it looks good. It was, yet, not my will, but yours be done. What if Jesus was led by his emotions? Let me ask you that question. What if he was led by his emotions? You know what? This cup of suffering... I don't think I want to do it. I know what's about to happen, the cross, and I don't feel like it. That's going to hurt. I don't really like how I feel about this, so I'm going to leave the garden. I'm going to go hide out in another town, and I'm going to come back when the threat of crucifixion is over, and, you know, then I'll just preach, and I'll just teach to people, and it'll be fine. If he did that, you and I wouldn't be sitting here today saved, sanctified, delivered with hope of heaven and the promise of heaven. Thank God he wasn't led by his emotions. 
How many of you and how many in this room, and myself included, are there amazing things that God wants to do with us, but because we're led by our circumstances, because we're led by what it feels like, because we're thrown back and forth based on the waves that come our way, how many things are we missing out on because our emotions are ruling us? I want to tell you today, it's time for that to break off of this church, off of my life, off of your life. We need to get grounded. We need to get satisfied in him. We need to understand that he is the worthy one. He is the faithful one. This world and the things going on are no joke. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of stuff going on. And we have to get it together, church. I'm talking to myself too. We've got to get past emotions and get to the truth of not my will, but yours be done. Because even if I don't feel like it, even if it doesn't look good, even if it doesn't feel good, I still serve you, God. We're not called to, to worship God and to serve God when everything feels perfect all the time. We're called to worship him through the even ifs. Even if my job doesn't change, even if my spouse doesn't get better, even if that sickness still happens, even if this world is still crazy in my opinion, it's in the even if. Even if I will love you, even if I will serve you because you have the stability, you have the rock, you have the place and my heart. And these things may come, they will, but I'm satisfied, I'm set, I'm locked in on you, God. And I will stay there, amen? Amen. Amen. And one of the things that I struggled with for years, and I still do, is that, you know, what do you do with the emotions that you feel? Because one of the things that I don't like is when people are like, just focus on Jesus, and they don't talk about the real emotions, the real stuff that you deal with. There is anxiety. There is fear. There is depression. There is these things going on in our hearts and our lives, and we can't just pretend like they're not there. And some of us in the room here today, you know, you hear the story and you go, that's great, but I'm not Jesus. Okay. I'm not Jesus. I want to give a, an example, a real life practical example of how to get through this and still come out on the other side of saying, not my will, but yours be done. We're going to look at King David. Because King David is, he's a man after God's own heart. That means that he has the heart of God, but he's real. We can relate to him, right? Right? And so I want to take a look at Psalm 13, verse 2 to 6. It says this, How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? <laughs> day after day have sorrow in my heart. How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death and my enemy will say I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. Stop right there. Wow. That's heavy stuff. Look at it. I mean, read it. It's not just, let's read the Bible. Let's look at the reality of it. How long must I muscle with my, wrestle with my thoughts? My mind is filled with anxiety. It's crazy. I'm frustrated. I'm confused. I don't understand. How long must I have sorrow in my heart? My heart aches. I don't get it. I don't like this situation. I don't understand. I want to see change, God. How, oh, my thoughts, my heart. He's even talking about, help me, God, or I'm going to die. And he's crying out and he's aching and he's in pain and he's not hiding it from God and he's not pretending like it's okay and he's not pretending like he doesn't have emotions but he knows what to do with them. See, that's the thing that we need to get. If we're going to be grounded, we can't hold on to it. We've got to give it to the Lord. And King David shows us how. Because he says all of these things. He pours out his honesty. I have anxiety. I have frustration. I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't like what I'm going through. I can't stand this. And he says it, but then he puts in a big but. He says, but I trust in your unfailing love and my heart rejoices in your salvation and I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. See, from deep within him, he let this song, this praise come out. He said, this is the reality. This is what I'm dealing with. I'm afraid. I'm terrified. I got anxiety. I'm dealing with all this stuff. I'm not going to pretend that I'm not. I got all the feels, but I will choose to trust in your unfailing love. I place it at your altar. I place it on the throne, and I give all this emotion, all this stuff to you. And in the end, I will still say, yet not my will, but yours be done. Amen? 
Amen. This is the real Christianity. This is real walk with God. That I'm going to serve him in everything. That I'm going to love him in everything. Even if it doesn't change, I'm going to pour it out before God and still keep running after him. And I want to encourage you today that that is the kind of weight that we need to have in our hearts and in our lives. A trust, an unshakable foundation to insert the but, not my will, but yours be done. We can't control our circumstances and what's happening around us. If we could, our lives would all look different, I'm sure. I can't control my circumstance. I can't control people. I can't control the events of the world. But what I can control is what's happening in me. I can handle what's going on in me. I can't control the coronavirus. I wish I could. Don't you? Yes. I can't control these things. I can't control these circumstances and these things that are pressing on me. But what I can do is I can control what has my focus, what has the weight of my heart. And if I choose to let God hold on to my heart or if I choose to let circumstances hold on to my heart, I can control what's happening in me. I can control what and whom I worship. Because in Revelation 5, when they established that he was the worthy one, that he weighed in as worthy, he got the weight of their hearts instantly. God, you're worthy. Whoop, whoop, whoop. God, you're worthy. God, you're good. Instantly. That's what they did. Okay, you're worthy. We can't open the scroll. We can't break the seals, but you can. That needs to be our response in our lives. I don't get it, but you do, and I worship you. And I want to encourage you today that nothing good, this kind of life, this kind of mentality, isn't just going to spring on us. We're not just going to randomly wake up and be like, yes, I worship God in everything. We have to work at it. We have to be intentional. You know, I can easily catch an illness just going out in public, but I can't catch health. I could go out in public and I can get a cold, I can get the sniffles, I can get this stuff going on, but I can't catch great exercise, I can't catch a great physique, I can't catch a great health from eating healthy. I've got to do different things. I can't just walk around and it comes on me. I have to be intentional about the, the exercises, intentional about what I eat, intentional about the way I live my life, intentionality. We have to intentionally choose to give it to God and lift our hands in worship. All throughout the day, not just once a day, not just once a week, every moment, every moment. God, I can't stand this. Under your breath, this person is so annoying, Lord, but I thank you that you love them, and God, I give you glory. If not, it's going to carry into your day. It's going to stick on you. God, this kid is crazy, my goodness. But your word said that you will not give me a temptation more than I can handle. So I handle it to you, Lord, in Jesus' name, right? This is the way to do it. We need to look at King David. We need to look at Jesus. We need to say, I can't control my circumstances, but not your will, but mine be done. But your unfailing love. I read this amazing quote, and, and it was all about the life of Pavarotti. I don't know if you've heard of Pavarotti, but he's a famous singer. He's got this amazing, he had an amazing voice. And so he was just this amazing tenor. And so he was in the place in his life where there was a decision of what he was going to pursue in his life. And he was studying music up under a teacher, but at the same time, he was studying also to just teach in his life. And so it came to the place of graduation and he had to choose, am I going to go to try to be a professional singer or am I going to be able to go into teaching? And so he goes to his dad and he says, dad, dad, what should I do? Should I try to become a famous singer? Should I, should I keep going for this or should I be a teacher? And his dad says to him, son, in life, if you sit between two chairs, if you have one side on one and one on the other and you're trying to sit on both, you'll fall every time. You must choose one chair. And so he made the choice. He chose to go after being a professional singer and it was years down the road, but he took the stage as a professional and his dreams came true. Why do I tell you this? Because we need to choose in our life what is going to rule us. What chair am I gonna sit on? Am I gonna let my circumstances and my emotions control my entire life? Or am I gonna finally just sit on the chair that says God is good, He is able, He is triumphed, He is faithful, and I don't understand, but He does. I wanna encourage you, choose the right chair this morning. If you choose your emotions and your circumstance, you're always gonna be back and forth. But with God, 
when these things come, it doesn't affect me like it used to. Amen? Amen. I'm just going to have everyone, if you would just stand up in this room here today, stand up in this room. And there are so many of you that are dealing with very real issues, myself included. You know, you never know what somebody is battling next to you. You think their life is perfect. You think they got it all together. And I'm telling you, maybe they can't sleep at night. Maybe they just got a diagnosis. Maybe their spouse is a wreck. Everyone is going through something. And the truth is we all need Jesus. We all need Jesus. And so if you're in this room here today and you say, you know what? I've been putting my focus, my heart on the circumstances, on these emotions, on these issues, and I don't know what to do. I want to tell you today that he does know what to do. He's got the will in his hand. Amen? If that's you, you say, I need to let some of this stuff go. I, I want to learn to give it to God. I want you to lift your hands up in this place and close your eyes. Lift your hands up in this place. My hands are up. I'm sick of dealing with anxiety and fear and worry about all the stuff that I can't control, but I can control what's going on within me. God, I just come to you, Lord, and Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that your word says that it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by your spirit, Lord. And God, there is nothing that Don Andre can say or do that can break chains, but you can. And so Holy Spirit, right now, I just ask that you would go forth in this room right now in the name of Jesus and you would lift off weariness and you would lift off anxiety and you would lift off circumstantial Christianity Lord and God I pray that you would break off fear and doubt and worry and pain and panic and confusion and fear God that you would Holy Spirit lift it off and we would literally feel a weightiness lift off of our lives God because that's who your spirit is you bring life you bring lightness God and Holy Spirit, I thank you that you would break every shackle, every chain that your people came in with this morning, God, and help us to be grounded and rooted in the fact that you are good, you are able, even when it doesn't feel like it. Take us deeper into maturity, Lord, not thrown back and forth like waves of the seashore, God, but solid, solidified in who you are. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you don't just leave us to do it by ourselves, you're in us. Thank you, Lord. Break through in this place today in our hearts and our lives, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you would just keep your eyes closed and your head bowed, this is the most important part of the service. I want to talk to those who have never made the decision to follow Jesus Christ or you've totally gotten off track. You're like doing your own thing. And the, the truth is that the scriptures say, the word says that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What does that mean? We're all messed up. We're all in need of a savior. And that's why Jesus came for us. And I wanna tell you today that there is a savior who loves you, who adores you, who went to the cross to set you free from all the junk that is weighing down in your life. It doesn't mean that you won't go through it, but it means that you'll have someone with you when you do. And if you want a savior, if you want Jesus, you said, man, I admit, I admit I'm messed up. I got nothing else to do, nowhere else, nowhere else is working. It's something in you says, hey, I'm right here. If that's you and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ today, today is the moment, now is the time. If that is you, I'm going to ask you to lift your hands on the count of three. I want to give my life to Jesus. On the count of three, one, two, three. Lift your hands up in this place. Awesome, I see your hand, I see your hand. Yes, there's hands up going around the room, praise God. Keep lifting your hands, come on, now is the time. This is the moment, this is the day. Praise God. You can put your hands down. Church, this is the time where we rejoice, we celebrate and we say it loud and we say it proud together that we would let hell know today that we made a decision to follow Jesus Christ. If you've said this before or if you've never said it and you want to, let's do it together. Repeat after me, dear Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. I confess that I'm messed up and I need you from this day forward. I give my life, I give my all to you and I choose to follow you all the days of my life. Help me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. This is amazing. If you said that prayer, please, 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 please come up and talk to one of us that's going to be up here. Our, our pastors and our prayer team, they're coming up. They want to pray with you. They want to talk with you. If you made the decision to follow Jesus or if you've got all the feels and you need some help and you want some prayer, come on up today. But I want to encourage you, remember, He is the weightiness. He is the rock. He is the one who rules our life.
Amen. We love you. God bless you. And we better see you next week. Bye.